Shanghai is many things in the summer. It was a shock to come to this part of China for the first time from Europe seven years ago. It hasn't changed since, I swear. July is particularly hard for me. Temperature reaches 40 degrees Celsius. The cicadas are screaming. We have terrible storms and typhoons. Humidity can go past 80%. And people around here feel something that can only be described as men. It is precisely what you can see in the character. A heart slammed by the door. It is the feeling of being constantly waterboarded all the time throughout the day. It's basically the feeling of being unable to breathe. July is the weirdest month of the year and more often than not, I forget that it even exists. It's the month when all your teacher friends leave for vacation. Cicadas constantly wake you up at 7 a.m. <laughs> The month of unexpected floods. <laughs> the month of durian being sold on the street. And this year is also the hottest month in recorded history, which some people see no problem with and that is deeply disturbing. Anyway, I have developed some coping mechanisms to live through the summer and hopefully this will help some poor soul from dry cold Europe. First off, the AC. Where I come from, ACs used to be something that fancy people install in their homes, like a dishwasher in China. One in a thousand apartments in China has a dishwasher, but most apartments have ACs and it will help you in the summer as well as in the winter because most of the apartments in Shanghai also don't have central heating. I had no idea how to use an AC when I moved to China for the first time, but thankfully my first roommate at the university was Malaysian and she taught me everything I know. Also pointed out that you have to clean that damn thing actually. This year, when I turned on my AC for the first time at the beginning of July, I realized that it's not really cooling. It's just blowing air, which is not helping. So my landlord offered to fix it while I was at work and this is the video he sent me. Yeah. So now that your AC is up and running, you want to make sure to set it to the dehumidification mode, which counterintuitively might be represented as a drop of water as on my remote. So what makes it so unbearable in Shanghai is actually the humidity. It makes the winters feel much colder and the summers feel much hotter. In case your AC doesn't have this mode, you can invest in a dehumidifier, which is also a great option if your bathroom doesn't have a window that will prevent it from growing mold. Another thing that you want to invest in is this guy. If you are using shirt bikes. This is a lifesaver for me if I'm wearing shorts or a dress because I don't want to sit my ass on a scorching hot bike seat that three other asses already sweated on that same day. And you're also leaving it clean for the next person, so win-win. It has a nice layer of foam on the inside so you don't burn your cheeks off. And I tried it on pretty much any brand of shared bikes that there is, so I know for sure that they fit all. You can get them on Taobao for like 15 quite, but if you do, I recommend that you get a different color because I already forgot like two of these just because it's black. I just left it on the bike and went away. Yep. Another thing that you want to have at home is a thermal bag. This is the kind of bag that will keep the cold things cold and hot things hot. It has a layer of lining like this on the inside and that thing is magic. If you ever order Waimai or ice cream, they will likely deliver it in something like this. And then remember not to throw it out and you can reuse it because it has like a little flap with a layer of glue here. So you can seal it. And it's perfect. 
I take ice to work every day in this bag and it serves me really well. The cheapest ice machine is like 300 kwai on Taobao and you can try for a used one but slim chances of that happening in the summer. I pitched the idea of the office ice machine at work but I was basically ignored. Here's why the idea didn't go through, I think. The same way hot water is the universal cure, Iced water is the universal poison. Every now and then you will hear an urban legend about somebody who washed their feet in cold water and died. This doesn't mean you cannot get ice though. You can get iced nightshades and iced coffees throughout the year. You can also get ice at your local market and one kilogram of ice would cost you approximately eight kwai. You can even go to the Family Mart or Lawson's or 7-Eleven or whatever you have there and pick up a cup of ice and this will cost you approximately four kwai but this is generating a lot of plastic so... If you find yourself in the city during 40 degree heat, which I don't know why you would put yourself in that situation, but make sure to stop at a local mall. They tend to blast the AC like there is no tomorrow. If the temperature difference doesn't give you a stroke straight away, swing by Daiso or Miniso or other preferred shop for little cute weird things and get yourself a fan. You can get all kinds of fans. The one I have at work is actually a computer fan because I find that these are the best for cooling. <laughs> but you can even get an electric handheld fan. Paper fans are not a rare sight either. You can get a cool hat or those weird caps that basically give shade to your face but they don't cover your head. I feel like sunscreens weren't a thing until recently when all the import shops started popping up around the city. So people were using different ways to avoid the sun. But you don't really want to avoid the sun, you want to avoid the UV light. So in order to do that, people use umbrellas and these are mostly the umbrellas with the black lining that can reflect the UV light. People cover their faces and their hands and their legs. Ever heard of face skinnies? This is a pretty common sight too. I honestly cannot say I hate it. Because I, I love the sun, I hate the skin cancer. Okay, so let's move on to the contents of your fridge. You definitely want one or two of these guys. These are the little ice packs that they will add to your order if you order something that could be destroyed in the heat. These are not for eating, okay? I always save a bunch for when I burn myself or something, which happens pretty freaking often. You can freeze them multiple times and it's a really good thing to have at home. If you like cold brews, you can invest in something like this bottle. I like these because they don't take up much space in the fridge, but you can make your cold brew in literally any container. I use a pickle jar at work and it works perfectly fine. My coworkers see me every day with a gigantic jar of something that looks like mud. So these are from a company called Hario and you can get them either with a coffee filter or a tea filter, but I would say the coffee filter is perfectly fine for making both coffee and tea. So if you have to choose between them, I would say get the coffee one. We also have a mini fridge at the office and it saves the day. You can get a used one from either Xianyu or Moven or a new one from Taobao or JD and the cheapest ones start at like 100 kwai for the really tiny ones. But I would highly recommend that you get yourself a used one because this stuff is usually in really good condition and you're also helping somebody else. I also have a tiny bottle of rose water in my fridge because when I get back to the apartment and it's pretty freaking stuffy, before I get my AC running, this is a great little refreshment and it smells really good. I also always keep my ice trays full. If I get things delivered to my place, then I make sure to offer some ice water to the people who deliver them in the heat because honestly, why my guys are always in a hurry, but it doesn't cost you anything to be kind to other people. And when the temperatures are this high, this can literally save a life. I also keep my gua sha and my jade roller in the fridge because at the end of the day, the feel of like the cold stone on your face is really good. And 
if you don't know what this is well for me it's just like a relaxing thing that i do before sleep so that i can signal to my brain that it is time to stop working and chill I highly recommend it you can find a ton of videos on youtube on how to use these so yeah i just i just keep them in the fridge so that they are nice and cold when i want to use them in the evening it feels really nice against the skin and also now they smell like curry 